church this morning. A bit cold, but good to see your lovely faces. It's wonderful to be back in Brisbane, and it's also wonderful to see you joining us today for our King Fest Sunday. Also, a very warm welcome to those joining us online. A special hello to our dear Ron and Jess, who might be watching online. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you have your hymn books ready or a device that is big enough to see the lyrics on the screen up there. So we have a lot of singing. Because as I said, this is the third hymn fest in our church. It is an intentional co-creating space and as a way of storytelling. So a big shout out to those who have helped to nominate hymns and choose music for today. So we have 10 hymns this morning, so warm up your throats and raise your voice as we come together and sing our praises to God and for the Spirit to speak to our hearts through the music and words in the hymns. So we begin our service by lighting the Christ candle. We welcome Hamish to light it for us.
by Sue and a few others, I believe. It was a, also a favorite of our dearly departed Jane and a choice of puppy on Facebook. I think she bought a lovely puppy for a, a pet person. And how big they are. You know, this is a timeless classic that celebrates the majesty and greatness of God. It's dreaming lyrics and melody invite us to reflect on the wonders of creation and the depth of God's love. That was Sue's dad's favorite, I believe. We yes. we'll sing together, joining Sue to sing uh, as we praise God, how great thou art.
and we also take a photo. This came at the loading and gave us a lot of special memory of friends, family, departed, and also forever in your heart. And in the next hymn, chosen by his friend this year, we are firm that following Jesus isn't about remaining still. The song, of course, mentions some other things about following Jesus, but yeah, this is the importance that I got of it. So feel free to tap your feet and clap your hands as we sing the Lord of the Dance. Let's celebrate and worship him with joyful movement. Then I'm going to stand as you are able. Let's sing number 232. Lord of the Dance. <laughs>
come to God with our prayer and confession. Let us bow our heads in pray. Holy God, help us to be honest before you in our confession this morning. Through you, we have salvation. Though you have helped us in love from the moment of our birth, we confess you that there are times when we close you out, times when we trust in our own capacity and strength rather than seeking your guidance and following your ways. Forgive us, Lord, for only turning to you when we have run out of our own resources, when our resilience wanes and our fear prevent for our future. Loving God, we acknowledge that there are times when we doubt your providential care. Times when we lose sight of your infinite goodness and hold what we own rather than sharing what we have with others. So often we lose sight of your kindness and claim to walk with you in credit. Help us to trust your sacred presence in all things and be content in your confidential promises. We knew our trust in you this morning. And search us, O oh God, and place within us a humble spirit that our whole being might be alive with the joy of your goodness. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. So we now come to our beloved hymn chosen by Eunice that's why one of their daughters ranked first name is a hymn that has touched countless hearts over the years. Amazing Grace speaks of redemption, hope, and the transformative power of God's love. Let us reflect on these things as we lift our voices together in singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> Something to eighteen something. Sorry, I can't quote the year, but it is something that 
Jesus did, not just personally for our saving of our life, our personal life, but we are invited to have courage to take on the injustice in our world. And he did. And this is the minimum song that comes from our person that have the courage to do that. So let us also yes, confess the sin for the nation and for Jesus comes to die for all our sins, not just personally, the sin of the whole world. So with this understanding, brothers and sisters, hear the words of assurance. God's forgiveness is offered to all. The promise of Christ is that we can live freely and be forgiven through his saving grace. So I declare to you, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. So our next hymn is chosen by Mark. Great is your faithfulness, beautifully captures the truth of God's unwavering faithfulness, celebrating his steadfast love and mercy. <coughs> it's a song well loved by Fred and me too, myself, because it was sang in our wedding about some 20 years ago. <laughs> Let us sing together with grateful hearts, praising God for his enduring faithfulness. One, five, four, great is your faithfulness.
by waiting or saying he in whichever style you like to the people around you. May the peace of the Lord be with you.
directly taken from the scripture in Matthew 6, 33 and 7, verse 7. It's also in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, verse 8 and 3, both and verse. That sets the scene for us to turn to the Bible. Let's welcome Peter to read the Gospel reading for us this morning. It's a two-part story, and we will fit a hint in between the two miracles. Welcome. comes from John chapter 6 verses 1 to 21. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for, for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread to, to, for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves gave thanks and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. They, they ate as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. As we pause from the story for a short while, uh, we now have a hymn, a favorite of both Carla and the words remind us, remind us of our thirst and longing for God. Who can satisfy our needs? I love this thing too, as it taught me in my early journey with Christ the posture I should have before God. So I invite you to stand and sing. We will sing three verses. The words are on the screen. As the deer pants for the water.
story continues. Jesus walks on the water. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing, and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water. And they were frightened, but he said to them, It is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. This is the living word of God. This is what we have. The boys, the little boy's small lunch was all that was available, yet it became the foundation for a great miracle. This teaches us that God values and uses what we offer. He values what's in our heart. And no matter how insignificant it may seem, in our hymn fest today, each voice and each heart contributes to a greater whole. Our worship, however simple, is precious to God and powerful in His hands. Yes, we pray technology, all this will spread a bit wider so people watching it, they can be touched by the music too. And third, God invites us to participate in His work. Jesus could have produced food out of the air, but 
he chose to involve the disciples and the little boy in the miracle. This collaboration highlights that we are collaborators with Christ. Jesus invites us to be with him, partner with him in his mission. As we sing and worship together, we are not just participants, but active contributors to a divine symphony of praise. Believe me or not, angels are there singing with us. And fourth, God's presence brings peace. <coughs> Later in the passage, we see Jesus walking on water to reach his disciples who are struggling in the storm. His presence calms their fears and brings peace. This reassures us that in our storms of life, Jesus is with us, bringing comfort and strength. To me personally, and I hope to you as well, there may be something that you try hard to work on. Remember the disciples, they try to get the boat, they work hard for three to four miles, in see any result. When Jesus revealed to them, this is I, do not be afraid. And they went across the shore. So, an encouragement for us this morning. Do not give up. Recognize who Jesus is. And as we lift our voices in song today, let us remember that God's presence is here. Bring us peace and uniting us in his love and also gives us power to finish what he sets out to do. As we celebrate this hymn fest in our small church, let us embrace the unity and community we share. Our songs are not just melodies, but expressions of faith, hope, and love. They connect us to one another and to God reminding us of his constant provision and care. So let our hymns be a response to God's grace, a way to give thanks, as Susan shared with me, she's here to give thanks this morning, for his unwavering love, and also to declare his goodness. May our music inspire us to trust in God's faithfulness and to recognize the miracles in our midst and to share his love with the world. May we never lose sight of the abundance of God's blessings, the joy of community and the power of worship. Let us sing with grateful hearts, knowing that our voices, united in praise, create a beautiful offering to our Creator. So our responsive song is chosen by Wendy. It reminds me of storm. Yes, <laughs> so I put it here. So let's stand and sing of the peace we find in God and our refuge and strength. Number 754, you are my hiding place. Yes, yeah, we are singing twice. Yes, once for the show. Yes, on two times for Yep. Thank you. <laughs>
Lord, we lift up the leaders of the world to you. Grant them wisdom, compassion, and integrity as they navigate the complex challenges of our time. May they seek justice, promote peace, and serve the common group, reflecting your love and righteousness in their decisions. We pray for the US and any places that are electing key leaders to govern and care for their people. Prince of Peace, we pray for an end to conflicts around the globe where there is violence and strife bring reconciliation and healing. Transform hearts and minds so that, that, so that peace may prevail and communities can rebuild with hope and unity. We ask for your healing touch upon those who are sick and injured in our community. We pray for Ron, Amish, Peter's brother in Fiji, Liz and Peter's daughter's partner, Nicole's friends, my mum, Amy's uncle, Linda and so many others, Lord, Comfort their pain, strengthen them in their weakness, and grant them the peace that surpasses all understanding. God, the hands of care give us a medical profession, professionals as they work to bring restoration and relief. In particular, we pray for Salvador Shanks, Dennis's grandson, Lord. We pray for miraculous healing and this um, chemotherapy to work. Lord, we lift up year 12 students who are approaching the end of their school journey. Bless them with clarity, perseverance, and a sense of purpose as they prepare for their final exams and future endeavours. Surround them with support and encouragement from their families, teachers, and communities. We pray for our local church that it may continue to be the light on the hill, a beacon of your love and truth. Empower us to serve one another in our community with grace and compassion. Increase our faith in you and add to our number. May we grow in our knowledge of your love being rooted and grounded in it, so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. And as we sing and worship today, may we be reminded of your immeasurable greatness and power of work within us. To you who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. According to the power of work within us, to you be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever.
May we share the love and hope we have experienced here with those around us. Go in faith and serve with joy. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us today and always.